Another day, another calf. Uh, last night, number 33 snuck one in there. She was a cow that I was kind of watching, but I thought some others would go before she did. But apparently she was ready because there he sits. And today just happens to be a feed day. In other words, I need to set bales out for these cows. And I'm really hoping that since those calves are laying down right now that they don't try to come up in here and get around the feeder while all the cattle are pushing and fighting to get in there. So we'll have to get this all taken care of and squared away, get the other guys checked on. And then the big job that needs to happen today is I need to get my hot wire set up at the winter pasture. I went out there first thing in the morning with the feed wagon and dropped a bale out there. So that should occupy them and buy me a few hours, but we need to get that done today. That's what's going on today on Farmer Tyler Ranch. Number 33 is out there being a good mother and she will not leave her baby side to come up and eat, but I certainly don't want her to miss out on breakfast and be punished for being a good mother. So we're gonna take a little bit of hay out to her right now. A lot of hay. That ought to tide her over for a little while. I saw a comment the other day where the guy said that the four day den is nothing more than an obsolete yard ornament. And I kind of chuckled because I guess on some operations that is true, but I don't know. I use mine almost every day and I get a lot of work done with it. I've been thinking long and hard about changing our calving season and moving these calves out another month. And the reason that I'm considering that, well, there are several, but like what we had to do today is a perfect example. Having to take hay out to that cow because she has a calf sitting out there and she doesn't want to come up to the feeder is just another thing that I have to worry about. And let's be honest, after a couple of days, she's gonna have no problem leaving that calf out there, coming in to eat. And after that, the next step is the calf trying to follow her up in there, which creates a whole nother set of problems with the calves trying to walk through that mud and trying to possibly nurse on their mothers while they're eating at the feeder, while other cows are fighting. And it's just the potential for something bad to happen is there. I remember being told one time that your calving season or, or a lot of the things, the decisions that you make on an operation like this should depend on your environment. That could be the breeds of cattle that you use or the time of the calving season. And I'm starting to feel like having calves come in April would suit this environment a lot better. Decided to take the S100 down here in the little pasture just because I don't think we really need the hot wire in here anymore. But also I'm leaving the wire up and I'm pretty sure those calves aren't gonna touch it for at least a little while. I, I have a lot of faith in this Energizer. This Gallagher S100 box hits hard. I'm just gonna sleep a lot better at night knowing that I've got that kind of power up there. Not to mention the fact that this box is strong enough that if I, you know, whatever happens in the future, if I decide I want to hot fence like another side of the winter pasture, this has got the power to do it. We just pulled in over here. I'm up here on the levee in my pickup and 
the reason that I'm in my pickup instead of the side-by-side -side or the four-wheeler or something is because it's supposed to start raining like anytime basically and I just thought well if I get rained on while I'm putting the wire up then at least I'll have a dry thing to drive home in. The only difficult thing about running a wire on this levee is this S turn here. It can be a little bit tough to stretch the wire tight and, and navigate that turn but I think that is where the Gallagher insulated line posts are really going to come in handy because they're a lot more rigid than the fiberglass posts so if the wire is pulling side to side on them they can take that. Honestly, I don't want to go too deep with these things because they can be really hard to get out, which uh, for the quality of the fence is a good thing, but for taking the fence down, maybe not so good. All right, I got all the insulated line posts around this S turn here. Ugh. So I think we can start stringing wire. See, I knew I forgot something. I didn't bring anything to attach the wire to that post, but I did have some hay twine. So I guess uh, sometimes you just use what you got. I might come back and change that later. We'll see, you know, it's one of those things. If it works, it works. Now the home stretch. We're about out of wire and we're about 20 feet from the fence. I'm, I'm thinking I can stretch this the rest of the way, but man, this spool, I think it was probably measured actually to go down this levee because uh, Max gave me this spool and I just feel like it's no coincidence that it runs the length of this levee almost to the inch. Well, we got her hooked up here and now we got some walking to do. Now, if you're watching this wondering, why would I cut out this big swath of pasture just to protect one fence or really one hole in one fence? And th there's a method to this. By putting the wire up here on the levee, it makes it a lot easier for me to get it up quickly and to get it down quickly. And if I need to move it to the other side of the road because they start doing levee patrols, it'll be a lot easier to do that. And I don't mind cutting this swath of pasture out because the weather that's coming, this is not going to grow. So I'm not really taking away a lot of food from them, I don't think. And my plan with this is after we get through all the rain and it finally warms up, which I just have to believe that it will, <laughs> I'll have a nice swath of tall grass here. So is it a perfect plan? Probably not, but that's what we're doing. And with that, we're done. Let's run down, turn the box on and see what kind of voltage we're getting. So these boxes have two different settings you can put them on. You've got a wildlife setting and a livestock setting. And the difference is the wildlife setting pulses at the standard rate, 24 hours a day. So you're getting like everything that you can out of the box. The livestock setting on the other hand at night it spaces the pulses out a little bit further. And the reason for that is just to save battery. Since I know that we're probably not gonna see the sun for several days, I'm gonna do the livestock setting because I wanna give this battery every advantage that I can. I think I learned something new today. When I had it on the livestock setting, we were getting 3000 volts 
and the wildlife setting was getting about twice that, a little over 6,000 volts. And I don't know if it's doing that because it's so cloudy that it like thinks it's nighttime right now. I'm not really sure, but I went ahead and I put it on the wildlife setting and I might come back this evening and turn it down to the livestock setting to save battery. But today I want the cows to hit it at full force so that, you know, we make an impression on them. Just rolling into the ranch here. Uh, we've got storms coming and there's a few things that I want to try to do before we get hit with a bunch more wind and rain. But as I pulled in here, I saw a cow that is either in labor or already had a calf or is possibly having twins. So let's go see what's going on. So I want to try to observe this cow without her knowing that we're looking at her. She's got one new calf out for sure, but it's weird to me that she's still laying down. And a lot of times that can point to twins. There's another one in there that she's still working on, perhaps. It's probably a little bit um, confusing to look at because he had cow number 33 that just had a calf this morning standing next to cow 17 that just had a calf and I just I still don't know why she would be laying down like that that calf was obviously very new pretty wobbly and wet still and she just wasn't standing up licking on it like she should have been I'm just gonna step back for a few minutes and we'll, we'll continue to check on her as I'm doing this other stuff here but uh, there's a chance that she's just, you know, just spit that thing out and was taking a break. That seems a little weird. And there's a chance that there's another one in there. But while we're waiting on that cow to see what does or does not happen with her, I need to do a little bit of work on this roof here. We've been forecasted for some pretty strong wind in the next couple days. And I know I've got some loose tin up here. don't know how much I trust this roof. I'm only walking where there are nails because I know that there are boards underneath there. But uh, yeah, it's not the most solid roof in the world, that's for sure. That's the problems we got. It might not be wind proof, but at least it will now be wind resistant. So I can see number 17 is standing up now and the original calf that was on the ground when we got here is nursing. So that's awesome. There's another black calf laying near them, but number 33 is also standing right there. So it could be her calf. I need to get a closer look. I think the twin alarm was a false alarm and that's fine. Uh, she's acting a lot more normal now. So I'm not really sure what that was about. Maybe she was still trying to push afterbirth. I'm glad that I knew number 33 had that calf this morning because the way they are all glued to each other, if I was to come upon this scene, I would almost think that number 17 did have twins. She's still got some afterbirth hanging out of her. If that doesn't clear by tomorrow, then I'll probably have to go in and hand deliver it. But usually if you give them a little bit of time, that's all they need. Well, normally I think I would wrap up the video right here, but number 57 is, she's really giving me the eye. And her, her bag is very large and engorged. And this kind of weather is the weather that brings calves. So we're going to come back in a few hours and check on her. I think we might get another calf today. It's a few hours later now and number 57 has not yet had a calf, but that's her out there in the field by herself. And 
you can rest assured she's not just out for a leisurely stroll right now. With the way the weather's coming down, these cattle ought to be looking for cover in some form, whether it's in the barn or natural cover like what I'm standing under right now. And to see number 57 and number 40, another cow that looks really close to calving, both coming out here out into the open field, I think we're gonna have maybe two new calves in the morning. I had a feeling this year that when calves started coming that they would start coming fast and it looks like that's turning out to be the case. Thanks for hanging out with me today guys and I hope I'll see you again on Farmer Tyler Ranch.